In this lecture, we conclude our introduction to the mesh current method for determining unknown currents and voltages in circuits by presenting an example that involves a dependent current and a dependent voltage source. Well, here's a circuit with a 6 volt voltage source, a dependent voltage source, and a dependent current source. The dependent voltage source has a voltage that is proportional to the voltage across this 1 kilo ohm resistor. And the dependent current source has a current that is proportional to the current through this 1 kilo ohm resistor. Now what we'd like to do is solve for all of the currents and voltages in this circuit by using the mesh current method. And to do that we'll begin as we have in the past by defining and labeling the mesh currents in this circuit. So we'll take this loop Define that as our mesh current I1. We'll go through, well, let's take this loop. Call this one I2. And then we'll take this loop and call that mesh current I3. Now before we get started writing our equations, the first thing we'd like to do is look at the voltages, the dependent voltages and the dependent currents and see how they relate to our mesh currents. So for instance, the current Ix on which this current source depends is I, it's the current in this direction, so it's I1 minus I2. So I will write Ix as I1 minus I2. Well next I'll notice that this current I3 has this dependent current source through this wire which is the current that we've defined as I3. So I can write I3 as twice Ix, but Ix is I1 minus I2, so that'll be 2 I1 minus 2 I2. So at this point what I'm doing is just working my way through the circuit trying to relate all of the unknown voltages on which a dependent voltage source might depend and the unknown current on which a dependent current source might depend to the mesh currents that we've defined in the circuit. So again, Ix is I1 minus I2. Then I'll notice that I3, since it's flowing right through the same path as this dependent current source, then I3 is 2Ix, but Ix is I1 minus I2, so that's 2I1 minus 2I2. So this mesh current I3 depends on I1 and I2 through this relationship, so if we can determine these, we'll know I3. Now this voltage Vx, that's the voltage across the 1 kilo ohm resistor, so if we look at the current flowing from the positive to the negative polarity references for the definition of this voltage, that would be I1 minus I3 times the 1000 ohm resistance. So we have 1,000 times I1 minus I3, but I3 is 2I1 minus 2I2. So we'd be adding 2I2 then when we subtract I3. So Vx is 1,000. Oops, excuse me, this was uh, I1. Then we'll have a negative I1 plus 2I2. So now I've related the dependent current in terms of two of the mesh currents, this current I3 in terms of two of the mesh currents, and Vx in terms of two of the mesh currents. So now if I write
mesh current equations for these two meshes in terms of I1 and I2 and any time I3 comes in I'll use its definition in terms of I1 and I2 I should be able to get two equations in the two unknown mesh currents I1 and I2. Well let's begin first with this mesh and I'll start in this location and I'll move up I encounter the negative sign on this voltage source so I'll write that as a negative 6 and then as I drop across the 1000 ohm resistor the current is I1 minus I3 so let me write that as plus 1000 for the resistance and then I1 minus I3 and I3 is 2I1 minus 2I2 so that would be a 2I1 and then I'll say plus 2I2 then we move through this direction we have 1000 ohms times current flowing in that direction is I1 minus I2 and that completes that loop so I can set that equation equal to zero so that loop gave me one equation with the two unknown mesh currents I1 and I2 so let me do the same for this loop so if I start here I'll have 1000 ohms now the current flowing in this direction would be I2 minus I1 and then through this resistor I'll have 1000 ohms and I have I2 minus I3 so this is I2 minus I3 but I3 is 2I1 minus 2I2 so write this as 2I1 and then the 2I2 and then we encounter the positive sign on this voltage source it's a dependent voltage source so we'll add that in and that's twice Vx but Vx is 1000 times negative I1 plus 2I2 and that completes that loop and I can set that equal to zero and that's another equation that depends on I1 and I2 so now I have two equations in two unknowns and what I can do is group all of the terms that depend on I1 and I2 and reorganize these equations so in this first equation I have 1000 I1 a negative 2000 I1 and a positive 1000 I1 so that's going to be 0 times I1 and then in terms of I2 I have a 2000 I2 and a negative 1000 I2 so that will give me a positive 1000 times I2 and then the constant terms I have a negative 6 if I take that to the other side that will give me a positive 6 now for this equation in I1 I have a negative 1000 I1 a negative 2000 I1 and a negative 2000 I1 so that should give me a negative 5000 I1 and then for I2 I have a 1000 I2 a 1000 I2 a 2000 I2 so I got 4000 I2 up to this point plus another 2 times 2 or 4000 I2 so that should give me 8000 I2 and we have no constant terms so that'll still be equal to zero so now I have two equations two unknowns and these turn out to be particularly straightforward from this first equation I can actually solve for I2 and in that case I2 is equal to 6 divided by 1000 so that would be 6 milliamps and if I2 is 6 milliamps let's see I'll have 
uh, negative, well I can divide this whole equation by 1000 and I'll move the 5i1 to one side of the equation. So I have 5 times i1 is equal to 8 times i2. So that would be uh, 8 times 6 milliamps. So that'll tell me that i1 is going to be equal to 48 over 5 milliamps. And of course once I know I1 and I2 I could find I3 and at that point I could determine any voltage across any of these resistors which would allow me to determine any of the voltages at any of the nodes. I would know Vx by knowing I1 and I2 could determine Ix by knowing I1 and I2, so I should be able to determine any voltages and any currents in this circuit.